Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Melissa Estabillo. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and owner of Biltmore Psychology and Counseling. Today I wanted to come and talk about why some of the stress that we're experiencing during the pandemic might actually be more stressful than other life events that we may be going through. You know, I talk with a lot of people um, every week and every day about some of the stress that they're going through and a lot of people are saying, gosh, you know, I feel bad really feeling overwhelmed by a lot of this because, you know, my situation isn't really all that much more different than other people's. But I think more than ever, that kind of gives us permission to feel stress because lots of people are stressed by this. Lots of people are having a hard time. But sometimes I think it's hard for us to really put our finger on why this event in our life might actually be more stressful than other life events that we've gone through. So some of the key things I think that are important to highlight is that this is truly medically uncharted waters. So it would be incredibly stressful if a loved one um, was diagnosed with something like breast cancer. But typically what we do is we go to a trusted professional, be able to ask them a lot of questions. We might go to Dr. Google and find a lot of research and legitimate articles that are out there um, of you know long-term studies that have looked at some of the most effective treatments and what um, often is ahead. We would arm ourselves with information so that we had some sense of control, some sense of knowledge about what would be happening. In this situation, it's developing right before us. The medical community, they're running, you know, tests and they're running studies with an N, you know, a group size of 100 and trying to draw some conclusions from that. And so the information is really being unveiled right before our, our, our eyes. And I think that, you know, the medical community is doing a fabulous job, but it's not like we have a really sure picture of what's ahead. So if we have a loved one that's an older adult that's diagnosed with COVID-19, that can be really stressful because we just don't know what some of the long-term ramifications would be, what some of the risk factors truly are, and what the outcomes will likely be you know, as we face this as a family. And so for that reason, I do think that lack of knowledge, that lack of certainty about the pathway ahead makes this particularly stressful. I think another piece of this is that there's a great deal of financial uncertainty on top of this. You know, I was talking with a lot of people, the economy was really good at the beginning of 2020, and so people were making really bold moves financially. They were deciding to quit their job and start their own business or to expand their business or, you know, to take on some financial debt that they really felt like would pay off in the end. And that's been really scary for them to say, I don't know if it's going to get worse before it gets better. I don't know if this decision that I made six months ago is ultimately going to be, you know, very, very devastating for my family. And so again, that lack of certain uncertainty, that lack of certainty, um, I think can make this really stressful because this is a large impact on us financially. I think another piece is that our closest communities are changing. And so, you know, in this really politically charged time, I think it's hard to feel like maybe half of our neighbors are not going to think the same way that we are. And this isn't a time where that's okay. This is a time where that can be really threatening and feel like there's a lot of tension and animosity just in our very own close communities. So while we're socially distancing, we also feel very emotionally distant, even from the people that are living the closest to us. And then lastly, I think that, you know, healthy people don't go into pure distraction denial but they know when to take a break. They know when to stop thinking about some of this and be able to disconnect and just have a time where they can kind of relax and think about something else. This doesn't really give us that opportunity. You know, we're inundated with the news. We're inundated with some of the changes, some of the coping mechanisms that maybe have worked for us, like going to the gym, were taken away and then given back and then taken away. And so we don't have a lot of break and respite from the intensity of the situation. And for that long-term stress, it can really be taxing on us. So for me, big picture, what I've been telling a lot of clients is give yourself a little bit of a break. Lower that standard of what high functioning looks like and say, hey, in this time, we're not going to be perfect. We're not going to always have the most patience or the most understanding or the most energy to really be able to tackle some of these things. And it only gets worse when we're hard on ourselves. So instead, giving ourselves a little bit of grace and compassion can actually give us that boost of energy that we need to find that creativity and find some of the solutions that we need to be able to get through this stressful time. But this is particularly and uniquely stressful. Um, life hasn't stopped. There's still a lot of things going on. And so we need to be understanding that, you know, this is going to be a time where potentially our mental health will struggle a bit. But know again that you're not alone in that. So for more content like this, you can always subscribe for, you know, like I said, future content, or you can ask us questions in the comments below. Um, we're going to be talking about some of the potential solutions to some of these stressors too in future times. So 
take care guys. We're thinking of you. And again, like I said, know that you're not alone.